Sniper Grit is the 10th entry to a Sniper action film series. I can't say that I was familiar with this long series before, but due to the good word of mouth around it, I decided to check it out. Thankfully, you do not need to see any of the films before this one. There's a few reoccurring characters, notably Chad Michael Collins, who has been the lead for 7 movies now, but it is not as complex in the overarching arc as another much bigger action movie series that also features 10 movies. You have to give it to them that an action series that started back in 1993 is still alive and kicking today even if it's in the DTV realm now. What makes Sniper Grit such a fun breeze of a watch is the chemistry of our trio composed of Chad Michael Collins, Ryan Robbins and Nuna Fujimoto. The first two have a nice bro relationship, reminiscent of the Expendables movies, but with less machismo in it. And Nuna Fujimoto adds some good drama since her character is the most developed here. She's the one who had a life before that movie, unlike Collins and Robbins, who are just dropped into a story. Dennis Acebert and Josh Brenner complete the team and have the classic Field Ready veteran and nerd guy team up, but it's done in a non too clumsy way with a few interesting scenes. As far as the action goes, it's not the most impressive DTV movie you'll find. But director Oliver Thompson, who's worked on the last three movies, shoots the action with precision and clarity. And the sniper aspect of the movie provides good sequences. The use of split screens at several points or one character guiding the other in front of him to locate and shoot bad guys with the view of the cameras on his phone and his laptop. A neat way to use the sniper element without actually using one. Luna Fujimoto gets the most memorable fight scene in a one versus all fight that's impactful and well put together and has to be a highlight in the series. Much like another recent DTV action movie, Accident Man It Men's Holiday, that certainly inspired the filmmakers, the movie uses Malta to greet you, making it a good looking movie that isn't dependent on green screens that may not look good in post prod due to, to its budget. At least in bigger predictions should take in account. It's definitely a good entry in the saga, even 10 movies in that totally knows what type of spy team up movie it is while delivering good action throughout.